I'm fairly sure my friends and I killed a skinwalker I say skinwalker since we're in the UK so it might be some werewolf thing. Shall I explain more? It's not going to be extremely exciting and full of explosions and firearms since we're in the UK. Day 1. Go out with two friends on a camping trip, aim to do a bit of bow hunting illegal in the UK but whatever and a bit of tracking, it'll last for 3 days. The land is a very dense woodland with lots of groves of yew and beech and parts are very swampy and water filled. One of my friends is called Tom, he's only been camping a couple of times like myself, not too experienced and wants to learn more. My other friend is called Richard, he's a very experienced hunter who's gone on hunts with tribes in Africa. He's very good in the outdoors, doesn't take much when he goes camping and goes for weeks at the time on his own. We're aiming to learn from him. He also took a replica Anglo-Saxon sword with him because he's been in this location before and he met feral dogs. We get camp set up, tarps, strung and leave our food out. We all go on a walk, Richard is showing us edible plants and medicinal herbs. We come back to find Tom's shitty hiking bag ripped to pieces and the food scattered everywhere. Richard took his small satchel with him when we went on a walk he doesn't take a lot and my bag was untouched. We assume it's a fox or feral dog that did it, Tom's annoyed but we have lots of food and his tarp and sleeping bag weren't destroyed. We cook food on our fire and try to get to sleep when we hear rustling around our camp. Richard just orders us to put more wood on the fire, we do, and the rustling can be heard all through the night. I don't get to sleep all night, everyone else does. Day 2. I finally get a few hours of sleep in the morning, still pretty tired. Richard has been up earliest, and he's smoking tobacco and looking off into the woods. Tom is still asleep it's around 10 in the morning and Richard talks to me in a low voice. He says listen, I found a dead fox a few feet outside of camp when I woke up, it had been torn to shreds. I don't know what did it but we'll need a lot more wood tonight. Also, don't tell Tom. I agree, and then I wake Tom up and all three of us go hunting and snarling. Richard has a bow and Tom has an air rifle, Richard shoots a few rabbits and Tom gets two squirrels, even though he's never been hunting before. We set a few snares up, and we'll go back to them at dusk. Squirrels often have fleas on them, so Richard climbs up a tree and hangs it from a branch, around 10 feet off the ground, to make sure all the fleas go away. We'll collect that at dusk. We spend the rest of the time gathering wood, smoking, and preparing our rabbits for our meal later. They're hanging above the fire in the smoke to stop the flies from eating them. It's getting dark, and Tom and Richard gather their kills. I stay at camp and I keep hearing rustling and growling coming from a bush near our camp. I get the fire going and keep my axe close. They come back and Tom is obviously shaken up. He says the squirrel he hung was torn completely off the trees, only the legs were left. The rabbits that we caught in the snares hadn't been eaten, but some creatures left huge claw marks on their bodies. They just played with it and left it to die. Richard starts cooking the rabbits he shot earlier and the growls and rustles keep getting closer. Then it starts howling. This isn't any fox or feral dog. It's like a fucking banshee. Imagine the screams of a woman mixed with a coyote howl and that's what it sounds like. Richard has decided he's had enough and he shoots an arrow into the bush. A large, black creature just runs out. We only see it from behind, but it's got long arms that hang from its side, and a very hunched back. With the back hunched, it's still 8 feet tall. It has dark, matted fur, and the smell is disgusting, it smells of burning hair and rotting meat. Richard and I start making traps. We make Viet Cong style foot traps all along the camp, and Richard smears mud all over his face and jumps up high in a tree, with his bow in hand and sword in his belt. He's a crazy motherfucker. Tom and I stick by the fire and hold our weapons close. I just have a long sharpened stick and an axe, he has an air rifle and a knife. Our weapons wouldn't do much. Richard's bow is enough to kill a deer, or an unarmored person, and so we hope that could do the damage. We keep hearing howling in the woods, and the howling gets closer and closer. We finally see it silhouetted against the ridge, although it's very hard to see. Tom and I put a lot of wood on the fire and I'm shitting myself. 
Tom is worse, he's very pale and shivering, even though it's a warm night. The creature goes past the bush, that's around 15 feet away from camp. It goes past the tree Richard is standing in, and Richard starts shooting it from the tree. The animal runs forward to get away from the arrows but it gets closer to the fire. I can see it closer now. It's got a canine-like face, but something about it is strangely human. I throw down my spear and grab a burning stick out of the fire and wave it around. Tom is doing the same, and Richard is still shooting arrows into its back. There's at least five arrows in there and it's not even flinching. Richard just screams and runs up with his sword and keeps on hacking and slashing. The creature keeps on screaming, and the smell of its blood is very acrid. Richard gets a large gash on his cheek and gets scratched by the creature, and it runs off into the forest. We see the creature's arm lying on the ground, and Richard's sword is covered with black blood it reminds me of the Lord of the Rings. It felt like 30 minutes but time has gone by incredibly fast, it's 3 in the morning. We put more wood on the fire and Richard stays by and cleans his sword. We hear screaming all night and trees crashing and falling, and then one final scream that stops. As the sun rises we clear up our traps, burn the arm of the creature and gather our shit, and get out of there. Tom has nightmares about it for weeks and hasn't gone camping since. I take a machete whenever I go on overnighters, and I always have a large roaring fire. Richard keeps on hunting and camping and starts getting interested in skinwalkers and paranormal shit, and he introduces me to it. We still go camping sometimes, and he's always very vigilant. He also converts to Anglo-Saxon heathenism and starts going back to the same forest and tries to appease the land whites of the area. He tells me that he clears evil from the forest, although he doesn't tell me exactly what he does. That's my story. Sounds implausible I know, but it truly happened and I'm not going to that place again. Richard Scar got infected but eventually healed if you wanted to know. Growing up in Texas, I've heard similar stories before. Didn't know they had a name. My grandparents owned land in the western part of the state, where all the cowboy movies and shit are filmed. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty much exactly like that. It's not all desert though, there are little patches of forest here and there till you actually get into the mountainish area. It's about 20 miles west of Snyder if you're wondering about the exact area I'm referring to. Anyways, on with my story. I call it a story. It's just a story my great uncle told me one time I was out there. He's old as shit, a real serious guy who has lived out there his whole life. He's seen some really weird shit out there, he never mentioned UFOs or anything, just odd looking planes from the nearby Air Force Base a lot of people in town mention an Air Force Base, which is weird because I never could find one on the map. If you guys do, let me know coming down really low to spook people for some reason. The skinwalker story as you guys call them, went almost exactly as the post had described it with the whole voice changing thing, except in his story, it completely turned into a person who had already gone home. He said it happened in his twenties out camping in the woods with some friends. I always figured him and his friends were just drunk till I came upon this thread. He said that they heard some really strange yelling noises in the woods, stuff that didn't sound animal or human, so they shouted who is it? Keep in mind my great uncle, his name is Bobby, would have been 20 in the 40s, so no kind of audio devices were really widespread I'm pretty sure and the voice replied something like Warsa, Ben, Wadisa, and finally, who is it? In the same guy's voice that shouted first, I can't remember his name. They went and got their guns and went looking around in the woods for it, nobody found anything. Eventually they give up and it gets dark, so they go fishing. The sun starts to go down, so they go fishing in a stream nearby. They set up the pop-up camper, and make a fire. They're hanging out, drinking, when they hear someone shout hello. From out in the woods. Everyone stops and is silent. Bobby decides to shout back, and it's silent for a while. He said, way too quiet. He told this part of the story with horror in his eyes. The voice calls back who is it? It's the same voice from before. The guy's voice was sitting at the fire. They freaked the fuck out, understandably. They all grab guns, 
split up and go looking for him. Apparently nothing was found, and they all went back to where they were camping scared shitless. The guy I can't remember his name whose voice was being mimicked decides he's done with this shit and goes home, along with the friend he brought with him. Later that night, everything calmed down. My uncle has scored a girl and is talking to her and drinking, and later on the guy comes back the one whose voice was being mimicked, let's call him Billy, these are old people now so old names. He says he got bored after he dropped his friend off, and decided to come back. They all have a great night, then when they wake up, Billy is not in the camper with them. No one can find him anywhere. They look around for a while, and eventually leave the campsite. A few days later my uncle Bobby is in town and sees Billy. He asks what happened to him. Billy replies, I wasn't about to wait around and find out who or what was in the woods, I figured it was best to drink by myself at home. Bobby is dumbfounded. Bill, you were with us all night. You came back to the stream a couple hours later. Bill is confused, and his friend and brother who are with him confirm that he never went back to the stream, and instead spent the night with them. Bobby has always wondered what it was that spent the night with them, and he never did hear that noise again. I'm always scared I'll hear it when I go hunting out there, but then the curious part of me wants to see it too. It's enough to keep you awake in your tent, though, that's for sure. I just realized that I actually have some sort of spooky story to tell, but it happened in 2004 so I don't remember it that well and it isn't exactly paranormal or exciting for that matter, but it is 100% true, 100%. This is my first time, please be gentle. Where do I start well, I can remember the year 2004 because that was when we moved from Germany to Greece to my grandmother's house. It's a very big house pick fucking related. I found it on Google Maps. It's out in the sticks. Civilization isn't far off, but two miles are two miles. I was 11 back then, it was summer, so no school for three months. Of course, I didn't know anyone, and the nearest place where kids would gather was kind of far away. The only fun we me and my little brother, 10 had there was our uncle 16. He did his best to entertain us. We always went for adventures nearby. He would take us for a ride on the scooter, went to town to buy us pizza, he had an air rifle and taught us how to shoot and dozens of other activities, activities that we were very unfamiliar with, being from Germany and all. Good times. One day he told us that we were going to make our own tree house. Fucking yes. He took two pallets from my grandfather's garage can be seen in pick, on the right to use them as the basis for the tree house. We placed them neatly in a big tree about 200 to 250 meters away from the house. Worked on it for two days, making it very comfortable and biggish, enough room for three people to sleep in. The same day we finished the tree house, we wanted of course to sleep in it. Prepared the blankets and stuff, carrying them over from the house to the tree house. It was early evening, the sun had started to settle and we were ready just in time. We spent time in the tree house, laying on our backs, watching the stars, I don't know if any of you ever been far from the city, because the night sky looks amazing and very clear away from the city lights. And our uncle, like he usually does, starts telling us horror stories. I am honestly amazed to this day his ability to tell a story. Not sure where he learned that because it did not seem self-taught. It was the typical Jack the Reaper style horror stories. The sceneries in his set stories were incredibly detailed, it felt like you were there and could see everything. At around 11 pm, my small brother acted to behave somehow. Bizarre I would say for the lack of a better word. What I mean by that is that he suddenly wanted to go away, he had a change of mind, and did not want to sleep in the treehouse outside. He threw a mini tantrum and demanded my uncle to accompany him to the house. Me and my uncle, visibly weirded out or annoyed I'd say, took him and went to my grandmother's house and explained to her what happened. He obviously got scared by your stupid stories she told my uncle. Well she was right. I was scared shitless too, I hid it very well though, I wanted to be the big brother and show off. We went back, climbed up. I forgot to tell you that the treehouse wasn't tall at all, 2 meters, maybe 2.20 meters. That's 7 feet. 
We talked for a bit and then went to sleep. I woke up, for unknown reasons, like three to four hours later. Stood up, and looked around me. You could honestly see quite clearly for a quarter mile in every direction. It wasn't a full moon, around five-sixths of the moon was showing, which was still more than enough to illuminate the cornfields around us. Kinda like pig related. I took a look at my uncle, and he was also awake. For some reason, I was not surprised by this. He also did not know why he woke up in the middle of the night. We didn't talk at all after, for a solid 10 minutes. Both wide awake. Just staring at the sky. And then, not out of nowhere, we somehow expected it to happen. We heard something like a donkey howl. It wasn't exactly the typical donkey noises but a lot deeper and what seemed to be exhale and inhale sounds mixed with the howl. Now, the strangest part for me was that my grandmother's dogs weren't barking. The house was like I said before 200 meters or so away. But it was an open field, out in the sticks, at 3 a.m. You could take a piss and people would hear it from a mile away. Said dogs were very hostile towards strangers, so like I said, it was very strange for them not to be barking like crazy. Odd as it might seem, I wasn't scared. Maybe because my uncle was with me, I thought this was normal and it's someone's local donkey or whatever the fuck or it was simply a prank by him. That's when I realized that my uncle did not move an inch and stopped breathing, he was scared, no, he seemed terrified. At that point, it felt like I didn't have any blood left in me, that's how cold I felt. He stood up, we looked around in the well-lit night to find what was making the noise. It was 40, maybe 50 meters away, tops. Despite that, we could not see anything, only hear the slowly getting closer and louder noises this thing was making. Let's get the fuck out of here, my uncle said. Are you crazy you fucking asshole I am not going down there I replied the swearing part is real, I get like that whenever I am spooked out. I guess it is my true self to be a dick. Trust me, this donkey can kick this tree and break it with ease he told me. I didn't reply. Remember that the tree house was not tall. It wasn't safe by any means. He looked at me and waited for an action. Everything was silent for what seemed to be a solid minute. And there it was again, crushing the silence that I wished would last forever. That fucking noise. That hollow donkey likes growling and with it, bush noises. We didn't even look at each other, we simply knew that we had to get the fuck out. I remember everything after that part in tunnel vision. We left everything there and ran. Sprinted like someone had thrown gasoline into our assholes and lit it up. We did not see anything. Not a shape, nothing. I wish we did, I could lie to you about it and tell you that I saw a creature, something, but I didn't. The cliché we never talked about it ever again sadly also applies. I will have to honestly ask him what this was all about. I feel like he knew what it was. It would explain his reaction. I could go into detail about our sprint if you guys would want to. This is the most paranormal thing that has happened to me. Basically my note is that I think there is something living walking around in my ex-best friend's skin. We'll tell the tale and the notes that led up to it. July last year. Me and friend both a team. Decide to go camping for a week. End up not liking any of the Lame paid campsites. We are doing this the old way god damn it. In this amazing area surrounded by paddocks and woods etc. Far away from houses properties. Illegally camp in this. Nearest town at least half. Half hour drive away. Fuck snakes and spiders we are AUS we are Australian. First few days of camping were great though it was pretty rainy. Every night we end up talking for hours and being hilarious, then go to sleep in a massive swag I brought. The place is great but for some reason we stick together, it made me uneasy to be alone and for some reason we always made sure we were within viewing distance of one another. One night we ended up huddled in fear. Can hear something walking around the fucking swag. Walks around us for hours while we both nope dot jpg the fuck out. Hear fucked I up screech from a distance. Noise like wind going past really fast and footsteps stop. 
we're camped in a clearing no wind can get through the trees like that hasn't this whole time. My friend laughs. Ha 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 holy fucking on. That was scary as fuck. End up eventually going to sleep but wake up at noon. Next day. I'm cooking. Oh shit we need more firewood. Can't leave this food because it'll burn really fast. My friend volunteers. Duh. First time one of us has gone into the wooded area alone. Friend pauses before going in. Finally summons some fucking courage and disappears from sight. I'm a fucking master chef. Not wearing my watch but it's been like an hour. I'm nearly done cooking this stuff. Assume they're taking a shit, I'll give that fucker some privacy. Fire begins to fail so I to fail so I have to get some wood and finish the meal. Eventually I realize maybe inbred fuckers have raped and eaten my friend. Damn it I spent ages cooking this meal. I am willing to avenge the risk of being raped and eaten myself. Grab a big ass knife, rifle, torch, and a bite of my delicious damper. Walk into the woods yelling for friends. Feel something watching me. Beginning to get scared but not about to admit that. Come out you fucker it doesn't take that long to shit. One in woods in front of me. See someone in. Hear my mate laugh. Hear screech behind me. Oh fuck no dot jpeg, sprint. Print that shit straight towards where I saw my friend, that fucker is unarmed. Be running, lose sight of friends. Call out to him. Motherfucker if you're dead I will kill you. And hunt up breaking through a wooded area into a paddock. Ah shit. JPEG. See something move in the woods across the paddock. Looks big. Bigger than me. Consider how many bullets I have. Probably not enough. Haha <laughs> no. Run back through the woods. Get through to the campsite. My friend is sitting there wearing a change of clothes. Ha ha ha. Holy fucking on. That was scary as fuck. See nothing wrong with it. Ha ha stupid faggot what did you do? Cover yourself in shit he laughs. Oh wait. Did you hear the screech shakes his head? Must be paranoid. W.A. Dig into some delicious food. Tell him about the huge thing I saw. He just laughs again. I wouldn't worry about it. That night. Sitting across from friend in front of fire. I've decided to teach myself whittling. Away. Whittling away. Cut my thumb. Friend looks at my thumb. I stick a band-aid on that shit and continue to whittle. He's reading a book and has a little lantern with him. I know what a faggot thing to do. Woods rustling and shit. Crickets chirpy chirping away. Friend laughs at something he's read. I think. About his laugh in the woods. Realize it's the exact same laugh, as the one when the thing walked around the swag. Same laugh he did just then, same as the first thing he said when I found him with different clothes on back at camp. He said the same words too. I'm weird. Eventually. Decide to drink a bit. He's a lightweight. We both crawl into the swag giggling. I have the knife attached to my belt. I wake up once and find him staring at me. Talk about. About this girl I really like. Drunk brain suddenly worried he might be going homo for a second while drunk. He seems to be really aware and listening to everything I say. Suddenly feels like my bladder is gonna burst. I stagger out to this little river that goes past our campsite. Take a piss in the early morning light while in awe of the majesty of nature. See something gray sticking out of the riverbed. Pull it out. Pull it out. It's my friend's shirt he wore yesterday before going into the woods. It's torn up pretty bad. A little bit of blood on it. Too drunk to really put anything together. Lovingly rebury it because my drunk brain thinks putting the cotton back to nature to decompose is a great idea. Clean hands on pants. Climb back into swag. Friend is fucking gone to the world. I pass out and wake up a couple of hours later. Friend still asleep. Dirty hands but then we both have dirty hands and stuff. Begin to nope about weird shit that's happening. Fire needs starting, while pushing the coals and ashes around to add wood properly I found a button off the pants he wore yesterday and a bit of grey cotton fabric like the stuff from his shirt. The fuck? 
Today is the day we pack up and leave. When my friend wakes up he's being as weird as he was yesterday. I'm packing. He gives me a weird look. I tell I him to hell. He asks if I can go get some firewood because he's hungry. I tell the bitch once we've finished packing I'll hold his hand and go into the woods with him. Once we've packed up we both carry shit up to the car which is hidden up near the bush track to get out of here. I've checked my car every day. He follows the whole way because the dumb fuck has probably forgotten where it is. We load up the car. I turn it on to make sure it's all good. Tune radio. Pretty static why but there's a weather warning about storms hitting the area. We go back to the campsite to grab the last shit. Can we go get firewood now? Friend is standing just inside the edge of the woods. Suddenly I get this feeling deep in my stomach, like instinctual fear or something. Really want to get the fuck out of there. Nah man, weather warning. Eat some food we've got left over and we'll buy something hot when we hit the next town. It's an 8 hour drive home. While I finish picking up rubbish he doesn't even eat anything but the fucker has been acting weird. Well if he's alright. Ask him. Yeah, Anon. I'm fine. Are you sure we can't stay another night? I don't think the storm will hit here. See something move in the woods behind him. What the fuck is that? He doesn't turn around. I pull out my knife and for some reason he goes almost into a defensive pose, giving me a weird look. Dude there was something behind you. He turns around then. I'm sure it was nothing, Anon. While we walk up to the car he looks behind us a few times. I'm trying to act normal because he isn't. So, uh, when I was cleaning up the fire I noticed bits of your clothes in there. He says he wrecked them while collecting firewood and didn't want to add to the rubbish to bring back. Fucking weirdo dude you've never done shit like that before. He shrugs and looks around as we get up to the car. Feel like something is watching me. Once we're in the car and back out on the road I feel better. I keep trying to make conversation but he doesn't put much into the conversation. I turn on the radio. Every so often he repeats things some of the radio presenters say. While we aren't talking I have time to think about it. Him not being worried about shit that worries me. Think about the weird looks he's been giving me in different situations. Feel sick and horrified and I realize the faces are probably the faces I was pulling at him at those moments. He's been mimicking. My expressions, realize he's been repeating phrases I say and his laugh never changes. His clothes all torn up and burying them. Finding them burnt after I found them. Wanting me me to go back into the creepy fucking woods for some reason. I know for a fact he isn't gay or some shit. He has a girl he likes and it's adorable how chill he tries to be about it. Talk about some stupid shit we did as kids. Ask him questions he just says. Oh I don't remember that part. Just agree with me. The more I think about it I realize he hasn't been acting like himself at all since he went missing while I cooked. When we get to a town I turn my phone on and call my mom. She's glad we had fun and stuff can't wait for us to get back in town and spend some time with her before I go back to work. FIFO for life. Ask him if he's gonna call his parents. Weird look again, then he gets his phone from his backpack. I grab money from our joint cash fund and buy us both lunch. He eats the almost raw steak from his burger but doesn't want his chips or the rest of the bun or salad. He goes in. Comes out with two more huge pieces of red steak, done rare pulls out his wolves those fuckers down while I finish my meal out his phone again and fires off some texts notice some wicked bruises covering his upper arms what the fuck happened there man he shrugs says the don't hurt well okay then I change clothes and shower there he is waiting by the car notice him staring and watching other people says he doesn't want a shower I call him a smelly fucker and so he disappears for a bit. Comes back with new clothes and has had a shower. Thank Christ we both smelled like wildlings. Keep on driving. Now night time. Only an hour or two out away from home. He slowly begins to join in conversation but he doesn't sound the same as he used to. None of his speech habits like making puns that sick fuck. 
no talking about the girl he's crazy about. Decide to bring up the creepy shit that happened out at the campsite. I swear I thought about shooting at that horse or whatever that big thing was but then I decided I liked my chances of not knowing. He laughs. I wouldn't worry about that, Anon. I begin to feel uneasy and think that maybe this isn't my friend sitting beside me anymore. About that thing that walked around our tent. What? He gives me this weird smile. Maybe it was a werewolf, Anon. I laugh. Or a hot chick who was lost. He grins wider. Or maybe something that was just checking us out. Feel weird again. I force a laugh why would anything do that like some cannibal or rapist. He looks out the window. I can't watch him because I gotta keep my eyes on the road. Maybe they wanted to get out of there as badly as you did this morning, Anon. What the fuck did it just say? JPEG glance at him, not looking at me. I can feel my knife still on my hip in its holster. The rifle stored safely away in the back. Haha. <laughs> like a skinwalker or some shit. Trying not to drive this fucking car off the side of the road. Something like that. We both go silent. He laughs. Same. Fucking, laugh. But that would be impossible, right, Anon? I laugh. Yeah, yeah it would be. Radio goes on and we don't talk for the rest of it. Get to his house, help him get his shit out of my car and then I drive home. Get inside. Shaking. I am a man, for fuck's sake. Keep it together motherfucker. Seriously think my friend died out there and there is something else living inside him now. Weird shit has happened like his dog and cat have mysteriously disappeared. He doesn't hang out with us as much and even the girl he liked tried to hang out with him and she says he was really fucking weird. He apparently acts almost robotic ally and only eats hardly cooked meat like a fucking caveman. His mum even asked if he'd gotten into any fights because his skin is always bruised. Now, he could have joined a fight club or has become the clumsiest motherfucker ever but honestly my best friend is a totally different guy. He recently invited me to go camping again at the same spot. I had to say I was busy but I'm terrified that maybe, there was more than one and when he tried to get me to go out into the woods with him he was trying to lure me out there for the same thing too. Happened to me. She had so fucked I ignore his calls now and whenever I get back from a swing at work all I get is complaints about his weird behavior and people asking if he's on drugs or some shit. For God's sake I've told my friends to never take him up on camping and I told the girl I like now my girlfriend all this weird shit that happened and she agrees that he is a totally. He was a stand up guy who was hilarious and laid back and now he is almost malicious and uncaring and sometimes I can hear that fucking laugh in my head and that fucking screech and it sucks being terrified of some asshole I used to love like a brother. And so concludes the fucked up tale of me being convinced that my friend is no longer human who he used to be. I have never in my life seen anyone change like that. Just, some days I fucking nope the whole thing and hope that I'm just crazy and he's just gone on some sort of hardcore drugs. Should have asked him things that only he would know. Lie about something, make him agree with you, and there you go. A better way to tell. Or, just come clean with everything, and see if he admits it. In arrogance. That's pretty much what I did. And that's what set it off for me. Stupid shit we did as kids was like putting this purple goo into these girls hair. He loves to tell that story because in order to get rid of the blame on us we put it in our own hair so we wouldn't get in trouble and they wouldn't tell. We got in trouble anyway. While we were driving I asked him if he remembered putting goo into girls hair. He said yes. I asked him if he remembered if it was green or blue or purple or something. And he said he didn't remember but was pretty sure it was green. Now, there is no fucking way he forgot. No fucking way. He fucking told that story a couple of weeks before we went down there. I also asked him shit about his first dog, Mo. He didn't remember shit about Mo. In fact made me so fucking sick of his vague fucking responses that I stopped before he realized I was getting upset. And God knows what would have happened if I realized what I was doing. But I assume it can read. And it learns. Very fast. Like his phone. When I told him to call him parents he treated his phone like he had no fucking idea. But then by the time I bought food he was. 
already texting people. And then he mimicked my expressions and other people's and the radio's talking. It was fucking too spooky for me man. Maybe it makes me an asshole for being willing to drop a friendship that I've had pretty much my whole life over these experiences but honestly what am I supposed to do hello officers, when I was on a camping trip with my best mate last year and we spent a good amount of the time drinking and camping on illegal ground which will get me fined if not in prison time. Pretty sure something ate my friend's insides and is now wearing him as a meat suit. Could you please contact the proper authorities and have this entire town and said campsite nuked? Ha. Huh. From what I know, he hasn't attacked anyone physically or asked anyone else to go camping with him. I want to say I had a brief encounter with one. But I honestly have no idea what it actually could have been. The only reason I think it was a skinwalker is because it fits with what most people say about them at least the Native American folklore version. I have some Native American blood in me too, so maybe that somehow drew it to me and there are preservations in Oregon where I lived at the time. I was about 12-13 at the time, and staying at my grandparents house as I often did. They lived out in a forest Y area of Junction City. They had a good amount of neighbors, but it was all trees in between. So it wasn't like they were deep in the bonus or anything. Even still they had a fair amount of land. Even still there were nights when we'd hear weird shit outside or loud thumps and the like, but we never thought too much of it since that's all that would happen and there's plenty of wildlife out there. Anyways my grandfather and I would pretty much always stay up late playing video games. Sometimes until the sun comes up, but on the night of my encounter, the night before I was getting picked up in the morning I was told my mom might show up kinda early my grandfather went to bed before I did. I think around 2 or 3 in the morning. Since it was my last night I wanted to keep playing. Oh before I go on I was in the living room. The TV sat against an inner wall and the couch sat against the outer, which was pretty much all window. To the left of the TV was a small connecting hallway that lead to an office room to the left, a bathroom straight ahead, and my room to the right. After my grandfather went to bed I continued to play for the next three hours without any problems. The game was either Gears of War 1 or 2. I can't remember which. The sun was just barely coming up, so it was a little bit light outside. A kind of grey blue light. And as I'm playing I suddenly hear a few knocks from what sounds like my room. It startles me and I instantly pause the game. At this point I don't know if it was real or just something in the game. I sit there in dead silence for a moment and then I hear the knocks again and what sounds like my mom's voice calling my name. I want nothing more than to just nope out there but I recall having heard my mom might come early to get me. However, I still feel completely uneasy about the situation. So instead of calling back to her or answering the door I slowly and quietly as I can make my way to the front of the house which is a small foyer that has two large windows. I'm immediately thankful the blinds are drawn almost all the way down. Using the small gap between the blinds and the window sill, I look for mom's car. And my heart sank. It wasn't there. I was now in full oh god no mode. But for whatever reason my curiosity made me head towards my room. I stood in the doorway with my eyes locked on my window. The blinds were drawn down here as well, which I'm both thankful for and regretful of. I stood there, frozen until there were yet another set of knocks and a call of my name. The knocks were super loud and I unmistakably heard them. Internally I flipped out but somehow I had enough common sense to not make a sound. I then went back to the couch and sat there for the next two hours until my grandparents woke up. I didn't hear anything else the rest of the time and they didn't believe me when I told them. And even writing about it dredges up a pretty strong feeling of fear. Back then I had no knowledge of skinwalkers, but looking back now the pieces fit rather well. But I have to admit I have no idea what took place that morning. All I know is that it happened and it scared the shit out of me. Nothing else crazy would happen there for years, though. My grandpa would tell me about some weird noises he heard or about their cats acting weird. That's about it, although the year before I moved out of state my grandmother found one of their cats half eaten. That was about two years ago now and the latest thing I've heard about. Okay X. I was obsessed with Goatman Skinwalker mimicry stories for a while but I haven't looked in a while. 
and then this happened to me last night and now I literally cannot sleep or stop shitting my pants due to its proximity to my house. I'll try to green text as much as I can, but first. I am 21 and a college senior from CT. While I live in a semi-rural area about 20 minutes to the closest supermarket fast food I go to school in Washington DC. Not the nice part, either. The part where crackheads are a real thing and cops are reassuring rather than troublesome. I've definitely seen some shit in my day. It would be good to mention here that I'm not some glandular freak but I'm about 6'1 and 240 a lot of muscle but lord knows I could drop 15 pounds I love to smoke pot, get drunk and eat sumi. Being the good student that I am, I picked a real major accounting and I interned for a mid-sized PR firm doing accounting bitch work and getting paid 20 an hour. College is expensive as fuck though so I deliver pizzas at night after the office closes. It's a cheap, drunk food kind of pizza place that has an absurdly large delivery radius and is around 20 minutes from my house, 5 minutes from the beach. My place is north of there and we deliver probably another 15 minutes past my house. I'm actually typing this at work in between examining the fine print on our client contracts to ensure we are charging them every penny we can cheap bastards so basically, the further north you go from the pizza place, the more rural it gets. I work until close and this occurs around 9.45 pm. Be me, in the back, folding pizza boxes like a good little corporate bitch. The counter girl comes back with a delivery slip. She tells me the customer sounded weird on the phone kind of like he was talking through a fan or through his hands and that he was almost gurgling. My DC experience instantly makes me think crackhead, although around here it's way more likely to be some benzo freak or painkiller addict. Automatically assuming some weird interaction will occur. Look at the address, see it is kind of bumblefuck. I'm a little mad cause I don't want to drive that far but fuck it it's the weirdest ticket I've ever seen. Guy ordered a large pizza with anchovies, ground beef, ham, sausage, pepperoni etc. Literally 15 worth of extras. I go ask the counter girl if it's right. She says she thinks so, she couldn't really make it out though so she said she did her best. She's like 16 so I cut her some slack, assume she was daydreaming and call the number back. Phone rings 5, 10, 20, 30 times. No answer. Hang up, call again. Phone goes right to the number you have dialed does not have a voice mailbox that has been set up yet. Goodbye. Okay then dot jpg. Manager decides to just make the pizza as ordered and proceed from there. Deliver a pizza to a hilariously obese and blackout drunk couple invited me in for drinks but I don't drink or smoke when I work. Hope someone else took a weird pizza. Surprise no one did it's my turn. Begrudgingly take the pizza and get in my car. Enter address into phone. It's on a side street adjacent to a park locals call open space, which despite the name is about 500 acres of straight woods. It's about 25 minutes away, basically the edge of our range. Put on some dubstep judge me and crank my turbo subby judge me more out to this road. If you're not from a rural area, this can be hard to explain. Winter in the woods is scary. There is never a single sound. Ever. Unless there's something larger than a cat walking around, it's you and dead silence. Finally get to address. There are a few houses on the street, but they sit on probably 5 acres so they are spaced out a fair amount. Looking for number 1134. I passed in 1130, then a long long stretch of nothing, then a 1144. I just want to get this over with and get the next delivery without getting stabbed by some pillhead over a fucking pizza. Call the number. Rings ring stops ringing. There's no sound but instead kind of like a buzzing or a humming. It's hooked up to my car stereo and it's getting louder and louder until I just hang up because I don't want it to ruin my speakers. Windows are fogging up cause at this point I'm pulled over between those two houses. Right when I roll the windows down I am overcome by the odor of decaying trash, like driving through Newark, New Jersey. Fucking gross so I put the car in first and I start pulling towards the next house. At the end of the driveway there's a stanchion with the light on top. Gonna pull into this house and knock and ask if maybe they gave the wrong number over the phone. Makes sense for a pill head. 
I'm probably 100 feet away when I see someone step out of the darkness into the light at the bottom of the driveway. Good it's the fucker that ordered. Expecting this guy to be all over the fucking place, leaning over and being fucked up. Guy isn't that fucked. Stop the car about 10 feet from him. Black coat that looks 3x too big for him even though he's probably got 5 inches on me. Don't look at him at first. Getting pizza out of car and getting ticket and change as I talk. Hey sir sorry about the wait and the calls this is pretty far. No response. Realize I should be watching him considering the signs. The smell is still pretty pungent but I know it's not trash day. I get the pizza on the roof of my car. He is standing under the light on the opposite side of my car, so I got out of my driver's seat and went to the driver's seat to get pizza. Put pizza on the roof of the driver rear, guy is probably 10 feet away from the passenger rear. I finally pay enough attention to get a good look at him. Giant tall, no shoes, ripped up jeans, stains everywhere. Big jacket as mentioned. Look at his face. Sunken eyes. Can't even see them with the light. Getting real sketched out cause guy hasn't moved or said a word. Stop the process and just stare at the guy. He is staring right at me with those freaky fucking eyes. His head is sort of bobbing side to side, but not in any fluid sense at all. Kind of like a car door, like how it stops at halfway open, then you give it another shove and it stops at all the way open. I watch his head do this in no real pattern for probably 10 seconds. Starting to get really uneasy between the stench and the head thing and the eyes and the not fucking answering. I stand frozen and so does he. Without breaking eye contact I take my phone out of my pocket and hold it level with the roof so I can look at the guy and my phone at the same time. Go to recent calls. Call the number for the guy. Call it. Phone starts ringing but I hear no phone anywhere. Then out of the quiet of the woods. I hear, faintly so so faintly, a fucking cell phone ringing back in there maybe 50 or 100 yards away. This is my kicking myself for not getting my CC yet. This is me almost shitting myself. The guy's just standing there still doing the head thing but I swear I see that fucker smile. Finally get the courage to speak. Uh huh, can you please come get this, also I think you may have dropped your phone when you were hiding a body or whatever in the woods. Nervously laugh. Still thinking maybe the sky dug too deep into the prescription bottle or found some PCP or some shit. I see his mouth open, head still bobbing, feet planted to ground. He makes sort of a low guttural, quick grunt, then a high grunt, then a low grunt. They are sort of soft, kinda like someone clearing their throat. I've shut the rear passenger door at this point and I'm ready to book it to the driver's seat if I got to. Just as I go to call that phone again I hear words. The phone is not mine. The pause between me and phone snot was way too long. Phone snot literally sounded like one word. Mine came off an octave higher. For some reason I am imagining the protagonist from hatred for this story. Not even an edgy teen. My mind is DEFCON 5 like just full panic attack. Knees are weak. I'm literally about to peace out. I push the pizza to the far side of the roof away from me. Finally muster out sir, you're freaking me the fuck out. I have a .45 and less than 20 on me. Please come. Take this so I can leave. When I say this the head bobbing stops. His eyes are dark and burning a hole through my skull, opens his mouth again. It was his. What I say, stunned. It was his that phone it was his. The guy comes towards the car. Not a step but like one huge muscle spasm that propels him forward. That phone was his he repeats. I'm on the verge of tears at this point. Standing next to open driver's side, pizza is on roof over passenger rear door. Guy jerk jumps once closer to the car. That phone is not his anymore. I blubber wordless and then gathering man balls I scream I'm gonna call the fucking cops and blow your fucking drug addict head off if you don't get the fuck out of here. I see this fucker smile this creepy fucking smile and without moving his mouth I hear him say in a completely different voice, a voice I've never heard before go away. Stop following me. I will call the police. In one big jerky motion the thing reaches forward, 
takes the pizza off the top of the car and places a couple round things that I later identify as quarters on the roof surrounded by dark liquid that spreads over the roof. I don't even think just get in the car and peel out down the road, leave the hot sleeve for the pizza, leave the shit on the roof, don't even close the door all the way. I go down the road at about 80 for a quarter mile then pull a U-turn cause I don't want to get even more lost with. This I go here. I whip down the road past the place where he was. Nothing. Finally get to the end of the road, there's a stop sign to merge with the main road. Look right to make sure it's clear, look left. This thing's face is 12 inches from my own when I turn. Tactically shit myself. Peel down road. Finally make it back to pizza place. Shaking like bloody hell. Smoke a joint just to calm me down which I never do when I'm working. I walk in the front door of pizza place. Hey and on that guy at the open space house just called back. He said you forgot some food but he only ordered. The pizza right he said come back I don't know. I start crying. Look at my phone which had been thrown through the car with my driving. Literally in tears. 14 fucking missed calls from that number. All the voicemails are empty except the last one. All I can hear is ragged breathing and those low gruntings. Fucking bawling my eyes out in front of this hot ass counter girl and I don't even give a fuck. Sit for 10 minutes and calm down. Remember the change on the roof go out to car and turn on flashlight.